Before we start this video, a large thank you to Philip, Edgar, Aaron, Gonzalo, Exelon, Sean, Stephen, Centeo, Andre, Adrian, Jonathan, Caleb, Demetrius, a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce, thank you for the support my friend, and the hobbyist for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to add sound effects to our game. So now if you go down here, you can see I have these damage sound effects and whooshes. So if we go into the game and I, I swing my sword, it looks really cool and just, you know, the functionality is all there, but there's no noise. So it, it really adds a lot to the game just to have a little whoosh when you swing a sword. And if you hit somebody, you would ideally want a damage effect to play. We have all this cool, you know, all these cool damage animations and directional damage, but now let's add another layer to it by adding sound. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call it Character Sound Effects Manager. This is because we're going to be making a player and enemy sound effects manager in the future if we need special instances where logic only applies to the player or enemy. That's an if. Right now I'm going to start by having my namespace uh, entered. Mine is SG, as is per tradition. And let's make some pseudocode slash to-do list things here. So we're going to want maybe attacking grunts when you swing your weapon or you uh, you hit somebody when you swing. Maybe for enemies only or the character too. Taking damage grunts when you get hit. That one is, uh, is a must. Taking damage sounds. So that will be like a fleshy noise of a weapon contacting whatever it is it's hitting. It might sound different if you had a player versus a monster or some kind of rocky abomination. And then footstep sounds, which again will differ from character to character. So let's start off with the taking damage sound effects. This one has a whole lot and it's very simple to do. What we want to do is make a header here and we'll call this taking damage sounds. We want an array of all of the uh, sounds that could play from this creature or player. So we're going to make an array of audio clip and we're going to call that taking damage sounds. We then want a private list for potential taking damage sounds. This is because we're going to use this to sort through a list of potential sounds and take out any that have been played just now. So we won't have a repeat sound or a sound playing twice in a row. You don't have to do this. This just adds, uh, in my opinion, a little bit of polish to it. So you won't hear the same sound effect twice. But if you don't care, you don't need this at all. And then we're going to make a private audio clip called last damage sound effect played. And that will store the last damage we played so we won't play it again. So let's start by making a public void play random damage sound effects. This is going to be a uh, function to select from these sounds and pick one to play. So let's start by saying potential damage sounds equals new list audio clip. This initializes our list. And then we're going to say for each and then we're going to put in our damage sound. For each damage sound in the array of taking damage sounds, we're going to say, if the damage sound does not equal last damage sound played, then we're going to add that damage sound to the list potential damage sounds. So basically, in a nutshell, very simply, if out of all the sounds we have, the one that we select is not the last damage sound effect that was played, then we're going to add it to a list of ones we could play next. So very, very simple. Let's put a comment here so it's even simpler. If the potential damage sound has not yet been played before, we add it as a potential. Stops repeated damage sounds. That's why every time we call this function, the list is a new list. Okay, so then we're going to say int. We're going to make a variable of type int. I'm going to call it random value. Going to make it equal between random dot range between zero and potential damage sounds dot count. And then I think you know what's coming now, or a lot of you do. We're just going to use this random value uh, in the list. So we're going to say last damage sound played equals and then we'll take that from our uh, list because we're going to select the sound we'll say taking damage sounds random value and we want to play this selected sound so i'm going to say audio source this hasn't been made yet dot play one shot don't worry you're not going to get this popping up automatically because we haven't made this variable yet and i'm going to pass the uh taking damage sounds and then pass the random value to select that sound from the list and then let's go ahead and make a variable uh for the audio source of type audio source. So I'm going to say audio source, and then I'm going to call this audio source, lowercase a. And on awake, I'm going to make the awake method here now. We're going to call that. We're going to say audio source equals get component audio source. This is going to be get component because we're going to keep it on the same game object as the script. Uh, you can also pass a comma here now and put in a, a flow value for the volume of the clip. I'm just going to say 0.4 F because my sounds are quite loud and that makes them sound pretty good. So when that's done, uh, I'm going to turn this into a public virtual void, and I'm going to turn the awake into a protected virtual void just in case in the future we derive this class, um, we use this class as a, as a class to derive from, and we change it. 
And that's an if that doesn't have to happen. So next I am going to go to the player. I'm going to add an audio source component. I'm then going to go to my enemy or enemies and add an audio source component. And then what you want to do is actually add the damage sound effects to your enemies and characters. And obviously if you have a player and then like maybe a monster, the damage sound effects could sound very different. So I am going to just basically drop in all three that I have here. Um, I'm just going to go to the character manager first and open that up. And let's actually call our, let's make a public character sound effects manager. And let's call that an awake. So we'll say character sound effects manager equals get component character sound effects manager. And remember, since our player manager and enemy manager derived from this class, they will also get this on awake. Okay, now let's go over into our uh, character stats manager, I believe it is. That's where we call our damage because we're going to play this sound when we take damage. Let's find our take damage function. Here it is. And right at the bottom, we're going to say character dot character sound effects manager dot play random damage sound. So as long as you're still using the base take damage on your player and enemy stats manager, uh, you will have the sound effect play. If not, you'll have to go enter that manually on both of those classes. But I am having the base uh, in both functions, so I don't need to do that. Now I'm going to now drop in my take damage sounds. So basically this is going to call the function we just created every time the take damage function is called. And as you know, that happens whenever our player or enemy is taking damage from a weapon or an event or some kind of thing that's happening in the scene. So basically you have a damage collider uh, contacts something with damage on it. So now that I've dragged in those damage sounds, if I walk up to the enemy here and I hit him, there you go. You can see it plays a damage sound. I'll hit him again. And there you go. Plays a couple more damage sounds. And once more, there we go. Plays a damage sound. Excellent. Okay. So let's add some whooshes to the sword to, to really get the game feeling more alive. So let's go to a weapon item. I'm going to store the sound effects on the weapon item itself. You don't have to. I just want to store them here. I think it's a good spot. I'm going to go down and make another header down here called uh, sounds or sound effects rather. And then we'll make another array. So it will be public audio clip and you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to use whooshes every time I swing, like, you know, like a, just a whoosh noise. So I'm just going to call this public uh, audio clip and we're going to call it whooshes or weapon whooshes. Yeah, we'll call it weapon, weapon whooshes. There we go. All right. So we go back over to the character sound effect manager now, and it's very similar to playing the uh, damage sound effect, except we have to check for some extra info. We got to know if we're using our left hand or our right hand when we're actually going to play a, a weapon sound effect, because we want to play the right weapon sound effect for the, the right weapon that's being used. So let's start by making a public virtual void, just in case you want to override it in the future, if you change it on the uh, classes driving from this. And let's go up here and make a header for weapon whooshes, because we're still going to need to make a private list and a private audio clip the same as the taking damage sounds if you don't want the same sound to play twice in a row. So I'm gonna make a private list audio clip potential uh, weapon whooshes and then a private audio clip for last weapon whoosh. You can call that last weapon whoosh play too if you want. And then down here on the play random weapon whoosh, I'm going to say potential weapon whooshes equals new list. So every time we call this function, we're initializing a list as a new list. And then I'm going to say if player inventory manager, whoops, actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to come up here and call the character manager because we, this is the base class, the character sound effects manager. So let's call the character manager up here. And on awake, we're going to say character equals get component uh, character manager. And from there, as you know, since our refactor, we can then get access to the inventory manager, which again is the base class of both our enemy and player. So it should work fine. So then we're going to say if character dot character or if character dot is using right hand, we're going to process the right hand sound effect else if character dot is using left hand then we're going to get a uh, whoosh from our left handed weapon you also don't need to say else if but if for some reason you have more limbs or some other things going on you do but in my case since i only have the right hand if it's not the right hand then it must be the left hand so i'm going to go ahead and just erase this and just simply say else so under the if character is using right hand the logic will be the same for both hands but we're we'll have to switch right to left that's it we're going to start with a for each loop and we're going to say for each, uh, I'll just call this whoosh sound in the collection, which would be our character dot character inventory manager dot right weapon dot weapon whooshes. Now make sure if you don't have weapon whooshes on all of your weapons, check for a null here. Otherwise you'll get an error. But in my project, you should always have sound effects on your weapons. So we're going to say if whoosh sound does not equal last weapon whoosh, then what we're going to do 
is add it to a list of potential weapon wishes dot add. And there we go. And then we do the same thing as before. We actually check for a random value between the total count. So I can paste this right here. And then what we want to do is basically just assign the last weapon whoosh played is equal to the uh, the weapon that we selected or the sound effect that we selected. And then we play that sound effect that we have selected. So audio source dot play one shot and then just play the sound effect that we have selected. Okay, so we can actually just uh, copy again all of this. Whoops, I have to paste that there. Otherwise, it'll play the damage sound effect. We don't want that. So we can copy all of this for the right hand and paste it down here for the left hand. There's three places where we call the right weapon on this. So just replace the word right with left and you're good to go. And you want to copy everything inside this if check for the right hand. So now you can highlight the right weapon here and it will show you there's three places in total in this part of the functional recall it. So let's just replace all three with the left. And we are good to go. Okay, so now if I save this, there's two ways that I would do this if I were you. So I'll show you both. Um, if you're the patients, setting up animation events is probably the best. So what you want to do is go and pick the animation you want. I'm just going to pick a random one. And then you find the point that you want the sound to play. And then when you get to that point, you right click and then you add an animation event. And then you find our function, which should be right at the bottom because we just made it. So you want to scroll all the way down until you see it and it will there it is play random weapon whoosh and then right there on that point in the animation it will do that for you or a very simple way to do it is if you time it so you're opening your damage collider right when the weapon has momentum which is what i do as well we can simply say character dot character sound effects manager dot play random weapon whoosh and this is on the open damage collider function and this is going to be on your character weapon slot manager so like I said, if you're opening the collider right when the weapon starts to gain momentum, that will look like the appropriate place to play the sound anyway. And that's what I've chosen to do. Next, go to your weapon and drag in all the weapon whooshes that you want them to play. I have a selection of five here. So I'm also, I made a mistake here. Uh, you need to go over here and copy potential weapon whooshes and change potential damage sounds to that. I've accidentally pasted the wrong thing. Go into the game here now, and I'm going to swing at this gentleman. And there we go, a whoosh and a damage effect. And if I go back and swing again, we get a whoosh and a damage effect. And that sounds excellent. I hope you guys enjoy the video. We're going to expand on the sound effect system by adding some footsteps and attacking grunts and some more fun stuff, probably in the next video. We're going to start doing a few more of the cool polish elements now. And I'm also going to cover ladders very soon because that was a request from a gentleman in the Discord. So if you guys made it this far, please don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment. It does genuinely help out the series a whole, whole lot. And I want to say a large thank you to my patrons. I sincerely appreciate you guys so much. It's because of you I get to keep making the series. So I will see you all in the next one.